In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started using Remind.com. And if you're a teacher, it's very likely that you know some other teacher that's using this tool. Remind is a fantastic way for teachers and schools to communicate with parents and with students. As it says here, school communication shouldn't be so hard. Send quick, simple messages to any device for free. And the beauty of this is it's a way for teachers to be able to text parents and even students, but to do it in a safe way. And it's really smooth how they do this. So let's get started. I'm just going to click here where it says sign up. At this point, I could set up an account using my email address or why not just link it to my Google account. Both of those are good options. I'm going to sign up with Google and select my Google account and connect those two together. At this point, I just indicate that I'm a teacher. You can see that students can also sign up and say that they're students, parents, administrators can do that as well. I'll just click I'm a teacher. Next it says what do students and parents call you? How about Mr? And then I can put the name in there that I would like the students to be able to see. I click next and at this point I just create a class. Now if you teach elementary school, if you basically have one class, it's easy. Just put the name of that class in here. But what if you teach middle school, junior high, or high school, or college, and would like to use Remind? What's a good strategy for naming your classes? Some teachers lump all of their, let's say, pre-algebra classes together and just group all of the students that are in any of their pre-algebra classes together into one group. Other teachers break it down by class period, so it's up to you. I'm just going to combine all of my Spanish 1 students into one big group. Next, there's a check mark here that I need to select. Notice what it says, I will only message people 13 and older. Underneath that it says, it's okay if students are under 13, we'll ask for a parent's email address to keep everyone in the loop. So that's something that you need to be able to accept. And then click add. Next, you can search for a school to attach your account to a school account. And then click Save. And that will make it easier for students at your school to find your class. Okay, wonderful. Now, before I move on, notice that I can create a second class here in the upper left corner. I could click Create a Class, put in Spanish 2, click Create. And I can continue to do that, just keep adding more and more classes if I want to. But next, I'd like you to see how I can get my students added to these classes so that I can start sending them texts and other messages in a way that's safe for them and safe for me and very effective. What I would do is I would click here on Spanish 1 and then there's a button here that says Add People. It's also in the upper right and when you click Add People, it gives you some ways that you can add people to this class. I could go in and just type in each student's name and then tab over and type in their email address or phone number. Now you can imagine how painstaking that's going to be, how much hard work that's going to take to put in each student and their cell phone number or email address. Kind of a painful task to do. You can see that there's other ways to do it. Instead, you could use a spreadsheet and there's a link here that shows you how to do that. But there are even easier ways to add your students. If I have 220 students, like I sometimes have had, I wouldn't want to type in their names myself. Instead, I would click here where it says printable PDFs. I would click download PDF and then I would print this out, photocopy it, give it to my students. And notice what it does. It walks them through step by step how to add themselves to my class. And it includes a special code, a unique code, that's only for me and specifically for this exact Spanish 1 class. So I could send this home with my students and they and or their parents could register a cell phone, whether it's a smartphone or a cell phone that's not a smartphone, and they could register to receive messages from me. Okay, I'm going to go back in. You can see that there are also in-person instructions, so you could put this up on the screen in class and it shows the students how to get set up. And finally, there's also a link that you can copy. You could email that link out, you could post it on your website, but just be aware that whoever has that link, they will be able to join your class and receive messages that you send out. I'm going to X out of that to show you once you've done that, you'll have a group of people signed up for your class. You'll be able to go here to messages and you can compose a message. Notice what it says here. Everyone in your class can receive announcements by text, app, web, and email. They can also reply directly to you depending on your message settings. So you could click there on message settings and change some of those settings if you'd like. But I'm going to go back and I want to send out a message. Welcome to Spanish 1. I'm looking forward to using Remind. 
Okay, so that's kind of a default message that you can send. I'll click send, and any students that are set up in my class to receive my messages, which honestly is zero at this point, they will receive that text on their cell phones. Later, I could just click to send a message to all my students. Remember to study for Friday's huge Spanish exam. I click send, and that reminder is sent out to all my students. So what a fantastic tool for communication between teachers and students and hopefully parents. Now, of course, if I wanted to message Spanish 2, I would simply click on Spanish 2 and create messages for them. I do want you to notice that there are some options for messages that you send. It can be a class announcement. It could be a group conversation with a group of people. There are even options for individual messages. If you want to send a parent an update on their student or let them know that their student has misbehaved or whatever you want to do. There's even an option here for activities. As it says here, Remind can help you take the hassle out of organizing field trips and fundraisers. So you could create an activity to track participation, volunteering, things like that. So let's say a field trip's coming up, a trip to the zoo, click next. You put in the day that it's going to be happening, the start time, the end time, and the location. And then click next. How much does this cost? There's an option to even use Remind to help you collect the funds. You click next and add the classes that this activity applies to. Click next and then submit. So I really think Remind is a fantastic way to stay in communication with the students and their parents in a way that's safe and very productive. The teachers at my school use this pretty heavily and with a lot of success. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy using Remind and I hope you'll consider connecting with me on some of my social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for a new video at least every Monday.